Welcome to FireDuck Skill Sprint about ETL. My name is Paweł Guwacki. I'm working for Embarcadero as EMEA Technical Lead for Developer Tools. And today I'm going to, do, to talk about one technology inside of the FireDuck database framework called ETL. Techniques that are demonstrated in these presentations uh, are applicable to both uh, RAD Studio XC7 and also App Method. So I'm going to use uh, Delphi and the VCL and the Interbase database, but uh, I could have used also the C++ programming language or use uh, FireMonkey multi-device uh, framework and also all other databases supported by uh, FireDuck. Applications compiled uh, with uh, FireDuck and with RAD Studio can run on Windows, on Mac, on Android and or on iOS. Skill sprints are very short, maximum 20 minutes uh, long webinars with just one topic and today we are going to focus uh, on the ETL. So the ETL is the uh, technology for extracting data, transforming them, uh, this data and loading into the uh, target data source. So it is used in many situations. Uh, for example, you can think about the situation when you have a, a transactional database with uh, lots of uh, transactions uh, happening all the time uh, with data structures highly normalized, optimized uh, for transactions. This kind of a database, when we want to analyze it, maybe for a decision support uh, systems, is not uh, very uh, good. So Typically, you want to extract the data from a, this a transactional a optimized data structures into a different database with may, maybe um, more denormalized uh, that are more suited uh, for uh, decision support systems or in general uh, ETL is useful when you want to take data from one format and move it uh, to another format from one place uh, to another. Okay, so FireDuck uh, supports uh, ETL. Uh, there are ETL components that were introduced in RAD Studio XC7. So this is the version of uh, XC7 that I'm going. Uh, XC7 is the version of RAD Studio I'm going to use, specifically uh, Delphi XC7. But the same technologies would work with C++ Builder XC7 as well. FireDuck introduces main abstraction uh, in terms of the TFD batch move component. You can think about it as a kind of a manager uh, that centralizes the whole uh, ETL uh, process. Uh, batch move has two properties, reader and writer, and you can uh, hook uh, to these uh, properties um, one of the three types uh, of the readers, dataset reader, SQL reader or text reader. And also you can hook to the writer com property uh, um, corresponding uh, writer properties. So this is very uh, flexible uh, and object oriented um, format. I'm going to demonstrate using those uh, components on three different scenarios. So in the first scenario we are going to uh, see a query. So in this situation I have my colleague coming into my office and he only knows about Excel and uh, the boss asks him to create a nice uh, report about uh, how many uh, different parts from which vendors we are selling in our scuba shop. So I'm going to create a query for him and expo export the result on, of this query to a text file that can be readily uh, used in Excel. In a second demo, I'm going to do the opposite situation. So I'm going to uh, take existing uh, comma delimited uh, text file and I'm going to uh, move this data into a, a database table. In the first scenario, in the first scenario, we are going to move data from one uh, database to another. We are going to have one master database and a backup database with the same uh, structure uh, so we can see uh, different uh, ETL uh, components uh, in action in different uh, demos. Okay, I'm going to switch to uh, RAD Studio. Specifically, I'm going to use uh, Delphi XC7. I'm going to create a, a new VCL Forms application. I could have also used a multi-device uh, FireMonkey uh, application. Okay, so let's start with the first demo where we have a, a query and we want to ex export results of the query into the, uh, into the text file. So I'm going to use an Interbase uh, database. Uh, I have my scuba shop database that I have already used in previous uh, de demonstrations. And inside of this uh, scuba shop 
uh, database there are two uh, two tables that I'm interested in so there is a um, table of vendors so our scuba shop is selling um, products from different vendors so we have a vendor number and vendor name these are the two fields that we are interested in and also there are parts so the parts are ad identified by the part number but there is also a foreign key vendor number uh, to a vendors table and there is also a description of the of the part and maybe we'll also going to add a list price so this is the data we want to use so we have a scuba uh, shop connection on the form I'm going to add a TFD query component to the form so we can uh, define our uh, query so if I double click on a query I can just start typing a query so I'm going to take this part number so from the parts table I'm going to take a part description from the parts table I'm going to have also um, a vendor name so vendor name and also the price the list price of my part so I'm going to take this from two different tables parts identified by P and vendors identified by V I need to do a join so where P vendor vendor number equals V vendor number and I'm going to order the result set by the vendor name because this is analysis by vendor okay so that's handy in FireDuck that I can actually preview right now this data if I have not made any mistake in my SQL so this is that the data that I want to export to a, a text file okay click on OK we know that our uh, query is uh, set up uh, properly okay the components uh, for uh, ETL are on a dedicated FireDuck ETL uh, tab inside of the integrated development environment and the key component is FD batch move component so this batch move component has uh, two properties a reader and a writer so I need to use one reader and one writer to set up the ETL process so we are going to use a data set reader component so this reader component I'm going to in fact uh, connect to the data set that is on the form already and my batch move component uh, is because I have put the reader after batch move so the reader is already set up properly I'm going to drop a um, text writer component so this component will be responsible for outputting uh, the results to the text file and it's already also connected to the writer property of the batch move and here I can specify some information about what type of uh, what type of uh, data should mm, get into the result file so I want to add a field name so it's easier to understand by my colleague inside of the text file so the first uh, row in a text file will contain the field names from from the uh, query and also what is the most important is the file name so I need to specify where I want to output uh, these files so I have a special out directory and I'm going to call this parts by vendor and this is a text file very nice so now I'm ready to execute this ETL so I could could have done it at design time if I right click on a, this batch move component it has an execute uh, verb here but probably it's more elegant if I add a button component and inside of this button component I'm going to just call this execute method so execute batch move okay I'm going to copy this for later and here I can just write this one line of code fd batch move so it's not going to be a lot of coding today execute and when we are done we just want to display a nice message that we are actually done so of course in FireDuck we know that we need to have this one not obvious component before we can 
do anything so this weight cursor component needs to be somewhere on the form we know what it is for and we want to save this into some nice location and this will be my demo ETL1 and unit 27 is nice and this will be ETL1 okay so now let's go and see if this is working I'm going to write this application execute batch move and we are done so if everything went okay and we should see inside of our out directory a freshly generated text document with all data exported to a format that can be easily uh, consumed by uh, anything that knows about the CSV for example Excel so this concludes demo one so we have seen how you can use a batch move component you always need the batch move component and one reader and one writer to uh, execute the batch move okay let's uh, have a look in the opposite situation we are going to create a, a second VCL forms application I'm going to right away uh, store it uh, nicely in a new folder called demo ETL 2 unit 27 again is very nice and demo ETL 2 project and this time we are going to do uh, the opposite situation we have a, a text file so this text file is in in the contrast in the in directory so this is a text file that we want to uh, import to the database and so you can see there are two fields here one it field which is a number and one name field which is a string so let's try to import this uh, into a, a database so I have a test um, database I have created an interbase ETL test database which is empty does not contain uh, any tables so uh, this will be my uh, target and I'm going to drop the, this ETL test table component to the uh, to the form and I'm going to, to create a, a table uh, just for uh, storing data from my uh, input uh, input uh, uh, file going to use a script so create table data and I have an it field which is an integer and also we have a name field which is a var char for example 50 okay I'm going to execute this statement so now I have a table inside of my target database for keeping the imported data okay so now I'm ready to uh, set up the whole process I'm going to add an FD batch move component first it's always uh, needed and we need to add a T SQL a T batch move text reader component so this text reader component uh, I'm going to uh, point it to my, the file I'm going to import so inside of my in directory there is my data file so it's already there and if we look mm, closely uh, inside of the this uh, in file we will notice that it's not really a comma delimited but it is a semicolon delimited so we need to tell uh, this to the mm, to the our uh, component that this is a uh, the separate separator is not a comma but a semicolon so before we can do any import from a text file the text reader needs to know what what is the type of data what are the fields inside of the this uh, this uh, text file so for this we have a fields property inside of the fields property we can and uh, we need to have a definition of each field that needs to be imported so you can do it by just adding individual fields and setting their data type their uh, field name their precision and so on but there is a faster way to do so we can actually delete those files here and we can tell the the batch move component to guess text format so this will execute um, um, the method on the text reader to actually try to understand what is there so it will you can specify the analyze 
uh, sample uh, count so it will take just first 10 rows of the um, our text file um, and uh, alternatively you could also do it by just by setting this analyze property but the guess, the, the guess uh, will do it uh, much better so I can click on guess text format and if I go back to my text reader open the fields property I can see that I have already pre-populated this it and name field so we already know what we are going uh, to read okay so now we are set for the reading now we need to output this information and send it to the uh, our uh, test um, our data table in a test database so I'm going to add a um, data um, a TFD batch move um, data set writer component I need to also add a, a query component just a regular FD query component so I can specify which table I want to use so so this writer component is already connected to the writer property and but we need to specify the data set as a property of a data set writer and this query already has the connection uh, connected so I only need to do this select star from select star from data this table is currently empty so if I execute this this uh, SQL I don't get any records okay so we should be good to go so again we need to add to our our form this weight cursor component weight cursor component is on the form very nice and we are going to add this one button component to execute our our code so I'm going to have already so I have execute batch move and two lines of code the same lines of code in each of the three uh, demos just FD batch move and we display the message that we are good that we are done okay so so now if I write glyphs uh, execute this I'm done so now I can go into my table inside of the EL test and I can view the data and I can see that I have all the records uh, imported correctly uh, from uh, the uh, text file okay so that's uh, that was the second demo and now I'm going to uh, switch to the uh, third demo in this third demo uh, we are going to have uh, two databases so again we are going to use uh, uh, interbase so uh, there are two databases with the identical structure there is a master SQL database so this is my source database and I have also master SQL 2 which acts as my backup database so from time to time I want to make sure that I want to move the my original data uh, from the main source main database to a backup database just in case so I'm go these two databases has the same structure same as my scuba shop so I'm going to move the the customer information from one database to another so if I go to the this must SQL to my backup database I can just go ahead and delete all records from the customer table because I want to replace it with the fresh information so now I if I select select star from customer I should see that there is no row selected so this uh, database table is empty so now our goal will be to set up a ETL process to take customer uh, data from one database uh, to another of course we need to have a FD batch move component on the form of course we need to have this stupid GUI uh, the GUI weight cursor on the form somewhere so we don't forget it later but that's not important so so far we have been using a, a text a batch move text components and data set components now uh, we are going to use this SQL reader and SQL writer so I can add a SQL reader component and SQL 
writer component. So these components are already hooked to my batch move, so I don't need to don't do anything else. And uh, they are different from a um, data set uh, in this respect that you don't need to have a separate uh, FireDuck um, data set. You can hook this, uh, you can connect these components directly uh, to a connection. So this could be possibly uh, different uh, database types, maybe one Oracle, one SQL Server, maybe one Interbase, maybe one uh, SQLite, maybe some ODBC data source. So this could be anything. In my case I'm using on both sides uh, Interbase. So my reader will be connected to my connection uh, called must SQL connection and uh, I could specify the name uh, just a name of a table so in my case customer or I could also use a SQL like select start from a uh, customer and on the other side I'm going to do the same so I'm going to select a connection must SQL to connection and the table name needs to be um, of the same uh, structure as my um, as my uh, source uh, data. So now it's uh, all set. I can add a T button component. So again, this is going to be the same caption, execute batch move. And here we are going to write the same two lines of code. Execute and we are going to do show message. Okay, and that we are done. Okay, I'm going now to save this as my demo ETL free, demo ETL free, and click on ETL free, click on save. Project will be okay, so that was my form. Uh, demo, demo ETL, maybe zero free. Okay, and now we are going to run this application. I execute batch move, it's done. Now if I open the, my customer table in the target database, my backup database, oops, it was not the right button that I have clicked, uh, select star from customer and we should see that there are 55 rows, 55 uh, records uh, already transferred from one database to another. Okay, so that was it uh, in terms of live uh, demos for today. So I tried to illustrate uh, main um, te techniques uh, that are part of this uh, um, part of uh, FireDuck uh, ETL. Uh, so uh, there are also interesting uh, references. Uh, so part of the doc wiki uh, you can see there is um, description of a sample that comes with a uh, route studio uh, xc7 that illustrates uh, moving data from text to table from table to table from table to text and also uh, probably the most interesting one is this uh, topic about the tfd batch move itself uh, so it also points you to the uh, topics about uh, individual uh, reader and uh, writer components. Uh, so there is also more properties uh, to control the actual mapping. You can um, generate a, a log uh, from the um, from the operation, uh, and uh, you can have uh, more flexibility. So this is all very nicely uh, documented here. Okay, so I'm going to move back to my to the presentation itself. Uh, so um, yeah, so this was ETL. Next week we're going to have a FireDuck skill sprint about uh, in-memory uh, data sets. Thank you very much for your attention and now we are ready uh, for a live Q&A. Thank you very much. And Tony was asking, did he need, don't, do you not need a TFD update SQL? Well, in the batch move operations, you can see that that a lot of the work is done by the batch move itself uh, inside so you don't need to do anything special unless you want to unless you're going from a data set then you saw that Pavel did a query uh, to select but otherwise batch move component does all of the SQL and database and table operations under the covers. Uh, Alf's asking what if there are differences uh, and you're trying to migrate one database to another 
Um, and in in those cases, as far as I know, the only thing you can do is is do it the old-fashioned way in code. I don't know of any other uh, transformation mappings. If somebody else uh, knows something that I don't know about the batch move under the covers, and Alf, yeah, you're when you're going from uh, different data types, for example, an integer field to an oracle number table, uh, when you're doing between two different databases, then I don't know of any uh, magic transformation that uh, that can take place. If you're going from a CSV file or some kind of text file that's parsed, as you saw, it'll try to do its best guesses on the field type, but then it'll move into, um, it'll read those fields and then write them out. But uh, again, I don't know of any magical transformation other than code. Uh, again, if somebody else uh, knows another way, I'll, uh, I'll take that. Uh, let's see. Antonio saying for demo two with a query, do you also need an update SQL? Uh, no, I don't know why you would want to do an update SQL. Uh, again, batch move does uh, does the operations for you. In all cases, uh, can you use a transaction with batch move? The answer is yes. The transaction is on the FT connection, so you could start a transaction and then at the end do a commit and and or rollback. Um, because that uh, that up the transactions are on the connection itself, not the uh, the batch move operations. Let's see. Are there events so you can convert transform the data on row and field lever level? Um, while we're looking that up, uh, Bjorn is asking: Is batch move compared to to array DML? Um, well, array DML we covered in a previous skill sprint, which has to do with uh, passing lots of parameters. Um, so that under the covers, FireDAC will will do all the operations that you need for multiple uh, uh, multiple invocations of the command. So it, it's not, I guess, it's a similar kind of operation of multiple things happening. The difference here is is in array DML, you're under the covers. It's taking that array of parameters and then doing the operations. Uh, here, batch move has the readers and writers, so you have these external, these other components that do the. Uh... Okay, so it's it's I guess comparable in some way, but different at the same time. I'll just say different. Uh, Robert is mentioning that T batch move has a mappings property, so let's go look at the mappings property. <clears throat> okay, so. It says mappings for for batch move operations. So you, uh, I don't know about types though. This is about mapping a column name to a destination column name. So let's see if let's read further and see if it does any kind of conversion. Okay, if it says the source and destination column data types are not the same, batch move can either cancel the BAP operation or perform the best fit. Oh boy, best fit. Uh, so in the uh, in batch move mappings, I'll put that uh, URL into. And then if it doesn't, it says we'll perform a best fit. So, and if not, it'll uh, it'll terminate with a uh, an abort on problem if abort on problem is set to true it'll stop the operation so let me put uh, that text in off's question <clears throat> so i don't see let's see mapping data types there's a okay i don't see any description of best fit so We'll have to follow up. That'll be maybe a good uh, blog post. Let's form the data on row and field level. I don't, I mean, you saw Pavel um, when it was analyzing, he set the number of rows. I don't know. Batch move is meant to do batch move, but uh, all at once. So execute, let's see if there's a parameter. There's a moved count property that keeps track of the number of records that are batch moved. 
Uh, there is a record count property that specifies the maximum number of records to move. If it's zero, then all records are moved. I don't see, let's look at append, update, append, update, copy, and delete. There's different batch move modes, but I don't see an event for row by row, field by field, tran conversion transformation. Um, I don't see one, but I'll, I'll do some... Uh, Additional searching. I'm, I'm looking in the in the FireDAC uh, wiki. So there's on error on find on find destination. But we need to find a matching record. So you can there's three events for batch move for FD batch move. There's on error where you get the error that take, that happens. Uh, there's an on find destination record fires when batch move needs to find a matching record on the writer, and there's an on progress event. Let's see what we can do with on progress. On progress, it's called at the beginning and end of data movement. Statistics interval. Just the phase that it's in: preparing, starting, progressing, finishing, unpreparing. So I don't see uh, a specific intercept for uh, batch move on a row by row or field by field, uh, but I'll have to search further. Not that I can find. All right. Um, will batch move take data from legacy data such as DBS or Paradox? Uh, if you have the ODBC driver for DBase or Paradox, then FireDAC via ODBC um, is one way to do it, where you would, uh, the source would be the ODBC connection to DBase or Paradox. So you just need ODBC driver. So Alf, you'll have to uh, try uh, uh, doing a migration, your uh, batch move operation yourself, and see if best fit uh, quote unquote, while I search for what best fit ultimately means, I couldn't find a mapping table that, for example, says integer on one database goes to Oracle number or whatever. So I'm going to have to find out what best fit actually does. And Paul says he can use it right away. Uh, I use it to move uh, data out of databases to CSVs for. I used to write code to do it, but now I just use that batch move uh, when I extract uh, registration data occasionally for our sales teams for specific targeted queries. So uh, I've been able to throw away uh, an enormous amount of, of uh, source code. Uh, so Robert said, uh, I gave a URL for DocWiki on the mappings that was BD, but FireDAC. It's actually the FireDAC as it relates to BD, but uh, but let me give you the uh, the batch move one. It was an indexing thing when I was searching. So let's, see, let's go back to go back to the properties. I'll give you, let's see if it, it could be the doc wiki indexing mechanism. Okay, so here you go. Here's your mapping again. Uh, it's the same document, but uh, here you go. There's the, there's the batch move that is from the main fire deck. Uh, it's like there's, it, it has the same, uh, the same text uh, when you get there. Do it manually at designer runtime for custom mappings conversion experience. Custom mappings, and again, this is from column name to column name. So, if in one table you've got customer, and another table you've got customer name, uh, you want to be able to do it that way. But uh, otherwise, if it's a different data type, again, it'll do best fit, or it'll give you a, an error uh, that you can uh, try to figure out. And we're going to search for best fit. That's a good question to ask on the FireDoc news groups. Dimitri is all over the news groups, both old and new on FireDAC, 
and he answers questions very, very uh, rapidly for people. Or you can put it in the question area of the Community 3.0, in the answers area, ask the question there, and then uh, everyone can collaborate on the answers, and uh, you'll find it that way. If you don't want to go to news groups, we've got a nice structured way with community answers uh, menu item. Alf asks, could BatchMove also define a new database table? BatchMove doesn't do that. You saw Pavel create the table. What you can do is on the FD connection component, you can, uh, you can, there's an execute method. So on FD connection uh, dot execute uh, in your app, you, in there you could put the string to create the table, uh, to create a table. So he did it in the, uh, in the Fire DAC con console or control panel, he created the table on the fly. But again, you can put uh, FD connection one, whatever it is, dot execute, and in parentheses, pass a string that's uh, that's whatever, so a SQL select, a, a SQL update, a delete, uh, a create table, create index, and so on. So you can do that on the FD connection component. So. Uh, Robert is saying he found uh, on the batch move mapping item has three properties, source and destination, and one called source expression. So we'll have to uh, figure out what a source expression is. I see the mappings to read mappings and set mappings. Uh, let's see what the mappings are. Use mappings property. Set up source and destination columns and get the current record, source record values. There are a few questions. Uh, Thomas said, nice feature, already used it in a solution, extremely efficient with great performance. Thank you for that comment, Thomas. Uh, Kai asked, what if the field names are different in source and destination? Yeah, there is this mapping property. Actually, in the topic for the FD batch move, you can see it. Uh, and click on it. So this lets you uh, define uh, how uh, source uh, fields maps to a, a target field. So they don't have to be uh, named in the same way. So you can define the mapping. So that's possible very easily. Yeah, it's the property on the TFD batch move component. And I put the URL in the Q&A log directly to the mappings property. Uh, where you can specify the mapping of the source to the destination, whatever. Maybe one's called customer and another one's called customer number or something like that. So there you go. Um, let's see. Uh, here's the here's the uh, supporting comment about why can't the FD GUI weight cursor component be just uh, supported automatically so you don't have to drop it uh, each time on, on, it, on a form. So... Um, Pavel's pushing for that directly with Dimitri, and he's explained in the past how there's different units that get brought in depending on, at least in the current architecture, depending on what uh, choice you make for the uh, for the type of uh, application you're working on, FireMonkey, VCL, or a console app. So, um, let's see. The question here is: Can the batch move do append update? Um, there are some um, also. Uh, properties on the FD batch move uh, that will uh, control um, how this is uh, done. So uh, yeah, they typically, uh, you have a, a, a mode property specifically, and it has a different uh, option. So you have an option always insert, append, append update, delete, update. So these are the uh, different um, values you can set to control how uh, the, the the batch move actually is uh, adding the 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 records to the uh, target. Actually, how the how it's sending this information to the writer because it is a generic architecture, so the writer can be a data set or could be a text file. So yes, you have a mode property of a batch move to control this. And I put the link to the mode uh, property documentation, which lists all of those. Choices always insert a pen, depend, update, delete, update, and so on. So uh, take a look at that link. Uh, it's just search uh, the doc wiki for mode or batch move mode, and you'll get there. Uh, Robert asked a good question that we're still, and, and John also went in, and let's see. Um, 
and it was asked earlier, what if there's different data types and what do you do? Uh, we're not aware of anything specific other than code. There's no intercept that we can find on row by row basis where you might do some transform. Okay, excellent. I think that's a, that's a very relevant feature. I, I think this is this ETL technology is uh, relatively new, uh, so um, it was introduced. All those components were introduced in XC7, and uh, Dimitri mentioned that he's planning to add more. Uh, to this uh, palette of uh, components, so I think one of the nice features to to ask for will be to have a kind of an event that would be fired on a per record basis and to allow for really a programmatic uh, transformation of data that should be doable in this framework, but as far as I'm aware it's not currently supported. The mapping itself supports just changing the names of the fields but not the types, but in general, it would be probably useful to have uh, more flexibility. So, I think that's something for Dimitri. He's very skilled. <laughs> I'm sure uh, if he finds it uh, useful, that would be not a very big deal for him. Is there a demo for FireDAC with Informix? Um, I mean, Informix is one of the choices. So, if you bring up, uh, if you drop down an FT connection, or you go to the uh, the data explorer for FireDAC, and you choose uh, Informix and then point to an Informix database. I don't have Informix on my system. I don't know if you do, Pavel, but Informix is definitely supported. I do not have uh, Informix uh, either, but the key thing about the FireDAC is that it has a uniform uh, architecture for working with all supported databases. So all the demos that are part of the installation of uh, RAS Studio XC7 uh, are uh, e equally applicable to different uh, databases. And also, if you look at the structure of the demos, they use kind of an inheritance model when you inherit from one form to more specialized forms. And you can basically choose from the connections that you have defined. So uh, all the demos are e equally applicable to all the supported uh, databases, including Informix. Yep. So just again, drop an FT connection down, right mouse click on it to bring up the connection dialog and there's a driver type you can pull down and choose in Informix and then there's whatever fields that are specific to Informix, the name of the database, username, passwords, whatever it is, fill that stuff in and then try executing or activating it and uh, and you're there. Um, you know when FireDAC provides support for MS Access 2013, Richard S., uh, Access is supported and I believe it's it's the latest versions same of SQL Server, MySQL, all of those different things, Postgres and uh, Firebird uh, 3 and, and so on. So if you've got an MS Access database, then just choose uh, choose Access from the choice and, uh, and, play, and use it. The goal is to support all the latest versions of databases. I would not be surprised if it is already uh, supported, but probably needs to be verified if the 2013 version is supported. I'm not sure 100%, but the philosophy of FireDAC is to support all the latest versions of supported databases. Yeah, I don't see why not, but here I'll put the URL for uh, for the connectivity for FireDAC. That's in the Q&A log. Um, and it goes uh, SQL Server Connect to Microsoft Access. It says here um, Microsoft Access Driver ODBC driver version 3 or later uh, for the 95 to 2003 databases and then for 95 to 2010 databases uh, and then there's ODBC so it says FireDAC native driver for access through 2010 is on the database access I'm not sure via that's direct I see that Dave has a nice comment about uh, converting between uh, database types and I think uh, that's a good point that you can also use the the database itself to uh, to convert uh, from one type to another. So it's not would not be on the level of the FireDAC ETL, but you can actually within the SQL statement that you use to retrieve data, you may perform some uh, type conversions as well. So this is not really directly inside of the ETL, but this could be a, a solution if you really need to have this functionality in your application. Yeah, I was thinking more about if you want to use batch moves. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it and see what happens. And there is, uh, if there is an error that happens, there's an error you can trap 
uh, and you can abort the, abort the operation or sort of log the thing and continue. So look at uh, the batch move component uh, and see it's got... Uh, it has a lock property and you can define if you want to append or uh, uh, recreate the lock and you can basically lock also the... It, if there are some errors, you will get an information what kind of errors you, you have encountered. So that's also a useful feature. Yeah, there's events on error, on find destination record, and on progress. Uh, the on progress uses the property, which is that statistical, I always forget the name of it, uh, statistical interview interval, sorry, not interview, statistics interview, hmm. statistics interval, and you, uh, you can set that, and it sets up the sample period for the on progress event. So if the batch move, if you're doing a big batch move, you could have this on progress event happen, and the on progress event will tell you whether it's uh, uh, where you are, whether it's running, whether it's oh, preparing, starting, progress, finishing, unpreparing. There's this phase uh, value that you get back that gives you the status of the data movement. So uh, t check out the uh, on the statistics interval property setting, and then the on progress event handler. If you want to have sort of a Maybe you've got a background thread doing back batch move, and you want to see what the progress is of uh, of that using the parallel programming library, for example. Uh, let's see about available drivers in my development system. I get a full list of drivers on system without XE seven installed. I get two or three drivers selected list. How are existing drivers determined? It's based on the fire deck. Uh, where is it? It's in it's in drivers users, public documents uh, Embarcadero. Fire deck. So look in there, and that's where the information is. And there's one fire deck across versions. So if you had an earlier version, you may have to uh, change the. Uh, if you install fire deck somewhere else, or just make sure you have the latest for XZ7. There's a fire deck home uh, variable that's defined in the registry. Uh, Fire Deck isn't versioned like DB Express was or like other things are, uh, you know, with 15.0, 16.0, and so on. It, it has one directory, so it could be that you don't have the latest uh, FD Connections INI file uh, installed or that something overrode it uh, if you installed an older version of the product. I'm not sure. But, Kai, uh, go and take a look at your uh, XZ7 install. Uh, for XE7, uh, you need that latest FD connection CNI file. For systems that don't have XE7, uh, again, you can always connect to the database directly, and then it'll find the right driver and everything's good. If you're doing, what is it called, like a managed connection, where you need the INI file, then copy your FD connection CNI file from an XE7 machine and deploy that uh, to applications that are running on other machines. Uh, and that's talked about in deploying FireDuck applications in, in the help in the documentation. Uh, yeah, and the drivers themselves will be compiled into the application, so it, you don't have to worry about the multiple different drivers. So uh, you need to have uh, the drivers for the databases that you want to support uh, compiled into the application, and then they will be okay. Two, two INI files uh, in that installation. One is for the list of the installed drivers, and the second is for the list of defined connection, so this controls this uh, whole process. Yeah, so just make sure, and there's a there's help document about um, about uh, deploying. Again, if you build and bake everything into your executable and you're not having some external tool like the console to manage uh, your connections and where they are and so on, then you don't have to care. Uh, it just depends on how you're building your app for deployment, and that's documented in, in the FireDAC deploying uh, applications and also how to manage uh, connections or not. Uh, again, it's your choice how you build it. If you just put a connection string name, then you need some way of relating that string name to, you know, your own internal name to an underlying uh, driver and and connection information. So, again, take a look at that documentation. Jim has a great question. Uh, in data set to data set connections, do the two data sets need to be exactly the same structure? The answer is no, they don't. And a couple things will happen. Number one, if you do a batch move, uh, FireDAC batch move will try to match up 
like columns to like columns by name. But there's also under batch move, there's another property called uh, mappings. So you can use mappings property. And I'll put the link there and also in the chat window. The mappings property uh, allows you to specify it's a string list. Uh, column equals column. So source column equals destination column name. You put the name. So customer equals uh, customer name, for example. If in the other table it's customer name. Um, and you can have any number of those mappings, each on a line. It's a string list editor in the mappings property. Another thing that came up earlier, and we're still, I'm still doing some exploration, uh, which has to do with what if you have different data types or different column types from the source to the destination. I'll put that in the chat window as well, because I've been doing some research uh, since this morning. Um, and what this has is there's how you set the destination column name equals source column name. Sorry, I had it backwards. Destination equals source. Put that string, uh, you know, multiple times in the mappings folder. The other thing is that uh, if the source and destination column data types are not the same, it says a batch move operation attempts best fit. So, for example, uh, I'm going to copy all this text. Uh, let's see. Okay, I'm going to copy all this text uh, into uh, Jim's question and send it. But the, uh, you can just use the link to mapping data types. Uh, what it does is it tries to best fit, so it'll trim character types if necessary to make things fit. Uh, so, you know, if you're mapping a char 10 to a char 5, uh, you'd end up getting the first five characters from the source column. Uh, you can, uh, there's an event for batch move errors, so you can hook the batch move error um, handler, and that I'll put in the chat window. There's a doc wiki page for handling uh, batch move errors. You can either abort on a problem, abort on a key violation. Uh, there's a problem count property that will give you the number of records that could not be handled. Uh, and there's, uh, let's see, problem table name, key violation. There's a few other uh, properties that you can take a look at as well. So as far as I know right now, it's a best fit, not only fit of size. The one thing I'm going to try probably tomorrow now because of the time uh, is to See what happens, for example, if I've got integer on inner base and I've got a number column in Oracle, does uh, FireDAC under the covers convert number the number data type to integer for me automatically as part of that uh, type mapping or type conversion, or do I have to do something? There's no intercept uh, that we know of. There isn't any that we can find, but we've asked uh, Dimitri about this you know, on row get or on row set or something where you might want to have some code where you would do um, the, uh, I'll put in there, um, you know, there's no way to intercept row by row, for example, or, or batch move select by select to do any kind of transformation or whatever in that way in code. Uh, maybe that's a feature request. Uh, Neville saying, yeah, the, uh, the links won't be there, but I will, uh, I'll just figure out I can make a bitmap slide and add it on the end that has those additional links. Pavel will blog about his samples and all of that as well. So, and I'll do a blog post probably with a bunch of these links, especially when I f see what happens when I try to move uh, one type from Oracle into Interbase or, or from some data type to database to another database. I want to test that. You can test that yourself as well. Um, Let's see. Uh, I was asking, can the batch move change field types during a DBDDB process integer to string? Again, that's one of the things that I need to figure out. The help only talks about best fit. So if I take that literally, it would mean uh, setting the size. But I found something else as it relates to BDE migration, where it also would handle certain data types. So. Uh, we don't have that documented. I've sent an email to Dimitri, and hopefully we'll get an answer. He's in Russia, so there's an 11-hour time difference to California uh, to see if he'll give us an answer to that, and I'll blog about it, and, and I can always audio add stuff to the replay, uh, which has all the Q&A from all three times. So don't worry, Neville. Uh, I got your back covered. 
Uh, we'll get that out in lots of different ways. Um, and you can. So Robert is saying, and, and rightfully so, is that you can, I mean, you could write code completely for doing the migration, but then you're not using batch move, right? You're reading, doing something, writing, uh, you know, inserting, updating, whatever. Uh, but Robert is right. You can do it in your select statement. You can do type conversions depending on the database to uh, to convert uh, certain types. Um, so on the select statement of the reader, uh, you could pull that in and do a typecast of it so that it matches what your target is. And so that's always possible. Uh, and Neville, I agree that uh, having an intercept of some kind event uh, for row by row for doing something, whatever that is, uh, that's something that I, in the email, I, I passed along as a suggestion. If there isn't already something that, that isn't documented, I didn't go into the source code to see if there are other event handlers besides the ones that were documented. So, you know, it's possible there might be something I just don't know. Uh, okay. And... Uh, 